Party people! Hey guys, it's just Neil today. I have the day off, um, so I thought I would get out. Uh, originally I had planned on going to Antietam Battlefield, which is up in Maryland. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away, but due to um, some stuff we're working on, we'll explain more later on, I was not able to uh, have the time to be able to do that. But I figured I'd still try and hit, get out and hit up a few Civil War battlefields uh, while the day was still short that were closer to home. And I am in Bra I'm at Brandy Station uh, Battlefield. Um, this is in Elkington, Virginia, maybe? It's called Pepper County. That much I know I can give you. And we're here. Um, I thought this place would be a little larger, and I thought it would be a little more well-maintained, slash had hiking paths, etc. It does not. Um, as you can see here, that's our little roundabout, which I guess is a parking area. I just kind of pull up off the side, and then right over yonder there is a, I don't know if it's a county airport or what, but uh, you got this. Um, I'm going to try and find more information, and I've, earlier I didn't record it. I wish I would have. Going down that road, it leads to a gravel path, which then takes you down by the airport. And I thought maybe I was going into an area I shouldn't be going into th with the airport, but if you keep going, there actually is, if anyone actually is interested to come here, you just keep going. The airport's on the right-hand side, and then you eventually will find a sign that says Brandy Station. And I thought when I went down there that I went to the wrong one, and that the main one was this one, where I'm at right now. That's not the case. There's actually less information here than there is there. There is a little plaque up here I'm going to walk towards, so I will catch up with you there. Alright guys, I found uh, a nice plaque that kind of gives a little lowdown as to what went on at this uh, battle. And I, what I do know about this battle, I don't, I'm not, not going to sit here and say that I am a Civil War expert by any stretch of the imagination. I was, uh, when Ken Burns' Civil War came out, I was probably at the time 10 maybe. Um, so that kind of did give a fascination into the Civil War when I was younger. So I do know, I do know some stuff, and I've actually heard of Brandy Station. Never been here before, but uh, this is known as, and it was, and still is actually to this day, the largest cavalry battle to ever happen on American soil. Um, I think it was 17,000 cavalry fought this battle, and I think there were 3,000 uh, Union infantrymen as well. They sent 8,000 thousand and I think that the, uh, the Confederates had 7,000 cavalry. Um, either way that's a lot of men on horse fighting. So the good news is I also found a little trail here. So there was a trail, pseudo trail of sorts that uh, gives us kind of a, a lowdown to what's going on here. Um, what you're kind of seeing here is some of the area that they fought. So long story short as per usual the Union lost. So long story short, Jeb Stuart with the Confederates were kind of, this is like a bre uh, not a breeding ground, a staging ground, thank you, that's what I'm looking for, um, prepping for their uh, move into Northern Territory uh, up in Pennsylvania, which ended up becoming what was Gettysburg. So, you know, they were kind of, this was a staging ground for them, and um, they, I guess, word got to the Union that they um, were doing, you know, that they were here. So, I think it was June 8th, I believe. On June 8th, the Confederate, or the Union came from the north over the Rappahappock River. Sorry guys, I'm really not talking good today. Anywho, um, and they surprised the Confederate outpost kind of north of here, about two and a half miles that away. Um, some shots rang out and as the day progressed, there was, I guess this battle was fought in three stages. They kept moving this way. And at the end of the day, Confederates won, which happened a lot until Gettysburg, and then things really started to change for those who are not Civil War connoisseurs. Um, yeah, another cool fact I did learn while reading up a little bit on this was that we were in Culpeper County. In, in the 1860s, Culpeper County was actually the most contested hotbed for war of land in the entire world. There were over 160 different skirmishes and slash battles in this county in Virginia alone. That is crazy to me. I believe that also said that 
120,000 soldiers at different points literally were staging in this area, whether it was the Confederates or the Union. Later on, I think the Union um, used this area big time, you know, as a staging ground. It's kind of a strategic because there are, and we're going to actually, I'm going to film another one today as well, and that's near Bristow Station, which was a train station. That's a big thing around like the uh, Prince William County Manassas area was, is, was the train lines, which were massive to both sides of the war. Um, and I'm not sure if there was one around here or not. I'm not sure exactly what, it was actually, yes. This was also a railroad. That's, that's why they were uh, trucking. Actually, here's a little map I can show you guys. Okay, so this is the train line, and Brandy Station's right here, actually, yes, and we're right there, so it's right near the train, and this train goes right over the Rappahannock River here, and it goes up to Bristow Station, and I'm not sure we'll find out the times on that, but um, I don't know if that was all part of the same campaign that the Confederates were having. But uh, yeah, we're going to take you around this little trail. I hope I don't die. If I do, this will be my last video. And maybe maybe someday I'll get posted because I'm not going to lie. There's no one here. It's behind an industrial park area near an airport. And it's just the vibes I get are kind of odd. You know, we've got gravel roads and stuff. It's uh, rural Virginia down here. It's not like it is up where we live. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just very quiet. So yeah. We're the only ones out, and I will give you guys some more information as I read some of these uh, little markers, and we'll go from there. Actually, I'm back. I'm just <laughs> literally just reading this. I was talking about those 120,000. Wrong. 100,000. Over 100,000 Union soldiers actually in this area right here in, uh, on December 1st, 1863. They made this their encampment as things were starting to cool down. This was the area where... I mean, you cannot, I just cannot imagine how many tents, it must have been massive. Um, it's interesting too, because we're not really on flat land, it's, we're kind of in what in Virginia is called the rolling Piedmont, you know, so you have, it's not mountains by any means, but you've got forests, but you have some, you have open grassy areas, but it's all on hills. So uh, not necessarily in my eyes, necessarily the greatest place to put 100,000 men to camp, but um, they did that. And right when it got cold, awesome. Alrighty, so that's this little mark. Okay, so I came from down there. There's a little wooden bridge of sorts, rickety little bridge that I walked across. That's where we just were. Now when I came out here, now I kind of get it. There is a lot of space here. And that would be where they camped. So reading on this little guy here. So long story short, they ended up camping here from December of 63 until May of 1864. So at that point in time, as the course of the winter went along, um, General Grant, who ended up becoming president, ended up coming here. They all kind of hung out. They did a lot of training. They got new recruits. They actually, tr they actually got trained in this area, new recruits, how to become soldiers for the Union. Um, now there's a really depressing little statistic here. It just shows how bleak the Civil War truly was. Um, it says, let me read it word for word, because this is pretty brutal. Not only two months later, in early May 1864, the men of the Army of the Potomac packed their knapsacks, fell into line, and left these camps for good. They're like, oh, okay. On May 4th, they crossed the Rapidan River and marched to the wilderness, which was just a brutal, brutal, brutal battle, getting on, on the way, that away, towards Richmond. Um, it says, before the momentous and bloody Overland campaign ended, nearly half of those who had spent their winter here in Brandy Station would be dead or wounded. I mean, that's 50,000 men dead or wounded who had spent months together here you know really bonding I, I, I can't imagine for, for you know the men who, who survived you know it's like this area right here was where they really bonded with their fellow soldiers you know to march off you know 50 miles that away you know just to be slaughtered it's 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 it's, it's war you know it's, it's brutal it's unrelenting and uh, the civil war was 
a very brutal war, you know? So, kind of interesting. These are, I guess I would consider these some pretty hollow grounds here, you know? And this was after the fact that they already had a battle here. So, I'm going to continue on, and I'll show you more, and I apologize again. The audio may be kind of a pain in the butt. What you're hearing actually is, heli or I don't know if it's a helicopter or a plane, but something over there, aviation-wise, is making some noise. So, yeah, let's continue on. Got a helicopter flying right over us. I have no idea what that helicopter is. It looks like it, I don't know, it looked like a military helicopter, but that's not a military base, so I don't know what it was, but that was pretty awesome. I gave him a little woo, but I, yeah, I don't think he saw me or cared. Anywho, I am back to walking the trail. I just thought I would share that little cool thing with you guys. All right, back to the map. We are now, we were just over there. Now we're we walk the loop. So now we're no longer dealing with the Union encampment. We're back to the war of the Battle of Brandy Station. So where we're standing right now, you had the 6th Infantry of Pennsylvania or the 6th Cavalry. I don't know, it doesn't say. Anyway, they're charged this direction. The Confederates were all lined up along that hillside there. Of course, they had the land. As usual, um, I guess Jeb Stewart was actually stationed right back over that hill there. Um, this was the end of it. This was it. They tried. They made their final push. They got denied. They got to move back. Um, as you can see here, you got all these cannons just lining right over there. Um, and, yeah, the Union only had one, two, three, four, five, five, as opposed to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, undermanned. Um, can't go there, it's, I guess it's private property, right back in that corner was, I guess, that was where St. James Church was. I don't know, I think it's no longer there. I don't know if it got pounded into submission during the battle or what. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that, so. Uh, that gives you a little oversight as to what it is. I don't want to make this video too long for you guys. There's really not too much to see. So I'm going to make my loop back. If I see anything interesting, I will make sure to share it with you guys. And uh, I am going to go down to the other where I originally drove. We'll see if we can see anything interesting down there. Um, now that I actually know where I am, I'm feeling safe with that. So yeah. All right. We will see you guys again in a couple seconds. seeing right there is the airport um, that's where that helicopter just took off from I'm gonna bring up my windows a little bit here so yeah that's where that is badass helicopter just flew off from so that's kind of cool um, yeah so what I'm doing now guys is I am going to take you down to the other part of Brandy Station and we are gonna go take a look at the other area I'll show you guys that really quickly as well um, yeah, I was hoping there were some rocks on this road, but I'm not seeing them yet. So, anywho, I will be there in a moment. We will show you guys what's up. This is what it kind of looks like. We're all driving, baby. Hee-haw! Okay, once you kind of go past the airport to some construction area, you come upon this sign here. And this says... Brandy Station Battlefield. 
So yeah. See, this is where I got a little weird. Like, what do I do? What do I do? There's a road that goes up there. I don't think we can drive along that. So I'm not handicapped, so I'm not parking there. So I guess I'm gonna keep going in a circle. I overpass what I guess with the parking area. It's just like a roundabout. It's very confusing. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This whole, I, I maybe I should have done more research. I thought I did enough, but um, I'm gonna keep doing donuts here on this gravel roundabout. But um, like I said, it's just nothing seems to be well marked at all. And it's kind of creepy because there's like nobody here, nobody. I know it's a Thursday and I know school's back in session, but I thought maybe some old people would be out, but lo and behold, they're not. So, all right, we're gonna get out and I am going to go and show you guys around up there briefly. All right, guys, I'm here at the other one. Just was over there, that's where the scary noise was coming from. Anyways, I actually started reading this thing. Okay, this map, we're up here. And that's not to say anything big didn't happen here, but this is a 21 mile drive. They said it takes about three hours to complete. Culpepper is down this way. Here's actually where Brandy Station today is. And this is where we are. Sorry, I'm not doing that. I mean, I think that requires essentially driving along a 21 mile path, getting out at these small little places. You walk around and that's kind of that. Um, interesting, I just don't have enough time. Plus, I really want to get out over to show you guys Bristow Station. So, I'm aborting this plan, and we're going to Bristow Station. I'm going to make two videos, not one, so it's not super long, and then people get bored and they stop watching. So, just to let you guys know, that's the plans now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. My little wrap-up, this was interesting. I'm glad I did it, but I don't think I'm coming back. We'll, we'll be honest with you guys there. Um, you're out on a Saturday afternoon, you got plenty of time. It honestly probably would be worth doing that three hour drive. I'm not gonna deny that at all. I'm only seeing one small piece of the big pie here that was this camp, you know, this battle. You know, this happened over, I guess, I think it was more than 24 hours apparently, because it went into the ninth as well. But um, this was just one small part of that massive battle. So I'm sure if I added up all the other pieces, this would be much more worth it. But um, Unfortunately, I don't have the time, which is kind of why I didn't go to Antietam. I would have done that over this. But, uh, yeah, so um, just be, you know, as I've kind of told you guys, I beat it in your head. Things are kind of well marked, but not the best. And, uh, yeah, just keep your eyes out. Use your GPS. Or if you've got cool maps, go ahead and use those. Um, so, yeah, I am going to catch up with you guys when we get over to Bristow Station, which is in Bristow, Virginia, kind of near Manassas and Prince William County, not far from Manassas Battlefield. So I'll, I'll check you guys out on that one. All right, bye.